Hello there, paper crafting friends. My name is Dawn Burchette and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today is Sunday, October the 9th. Welcome, welcome. And this is Facebook Live number 50. <laughs> Yay! So, welcome to Sunday Crafternoon with Dawn. I'm offering a mini class for you today. We're going to be playing with the Soft Seedlings stamp set, which I am really digging. I wasn't sure, but you know, this was calling my name when I seen it in the in the July through December catalog. And um, I thought, you know what? We're just going to play with it. Even though it does not have dyes, I know, right? <gasps> Oh no, but it is a beautiful stamp set and I think you're going to love the images and what I have to show you. We're gonna do a little bit of playing today. We're going to do a watercoloring technique. It's something that I seen Sarah Douglas, the CEO of Stampin' Up! do on her Facebook Live not too long ago. And it just caught my eye. And I thought, why not? Let's do that together. So you're going to see some really cool things done with the stamp set today. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do some housekeeping. So first of all, if you are on my page, which you are, this is why you're viewing me. I'm actually not live, but I'm doing a live. Does that make sense? <laughs> I am not home uh, for the next couple weekends. So I wanted to get ahead of myself and do these in advance, but this is meant for October the 9th on Sunday. And um, anyway, feel free to still comment because I will check back on the comments. And if you have any questions about what we're doing today, um, comment and I will get back with you. Reach out to me. I'm here to help you any way that I can. And with that being said, you are on my page. You're viewing this or you're in my Facebook community. Make sure to hit the like button at my page, which is Dawn's Creative Chalet Paper Crafting or also the community which is Dawn's Creative Chalet Paper Crafting Community. And go ahead and feel free to join that group as well. There we can share more than we can on my page. Um, also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be posting this on YouTube and on my blog. And do a search, once again, dawnscreativechalet.com for my blog or Dawn's Creative Chalet on YouTube. Make sure to hit the bell uh, when you do subscribe, and that will make sure that you get all the notifications of every video that I do upload to YouTube. All right, and also I am on Pinterest, although so I've been bad about pinning, but um, I'm seeing other people pinning my stuff from my blog, so <laughs> I need to get in a better habit of doing that. I used to be on Pinterest like almost 24-7, and I've had to like get myself away from it a little bit because that's highly addicting, but I love Pinterest. Anyway, follow me on Pinterest and it's Dawn Bourgette, the Stampin' Up! Demonstrator on Pinterest. And then this is going to be my October host code for the whole month of October. Um, let's see, let's see, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah. Also wanted to let you know some happenings with the chalet. Um, first of all, we have, well, actually, this is going to be, I'm doing this like I said in the future. So the sip and stamp at Starbucks will have been done. October 10th is uh, the last day to sign up for the Ho 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 Paper Pumpkin. And it's also going to coordinate with the November kit, which I think is going to be tags. I think this one's cards. So anyway, with that being said, if you're wanting to grab this, um, make sure to sign up by the 10th of October in order to receive that. Whoops, I'm right out of the frame there, aren't I? There we go. And also then sign up will be October the 11th. So we're right in that time frame, right? So October the 11th, we'll be able to start to sign up for the November kit if you're not already receiving it with me. Also, um, Coming up on classes, October the 13th is my creative card class. It's going to be holiday cards. And I'm offering that uh, at 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, or 6.30 in the evening. And you'll need to RSVP with me by the 10th. 
okay? And it's $25, they're free with a minimum order during class. And then also at the end of the month, on the 27th of October, which is also on a Thursday, and I'm offering it once again at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., or 6.30. And it is the sweetest Christmas ever product class, and obviously it includes product. So that's going to include the Sweetest Christmas DSP, a full pack, the red and green ribbon combo pack, and the adhesive backed seasonal sequins. And that's $37. And I do ask for prepayment on my classes. And then I offer a $5 coupon during the day or evening of the class on any size order. So that's pretty awesome, right? And then also we have this. Now I know I talked about this last week. Um, but I want to mention it again as it started actually on October the 4th. So this is called the Starter Kit Plus. Oh my gosh, you guys. Like, I seriously would not be doing my job if I didn't offer this and talk about it with all of you and share it. I know a lot of you follow me who are not demonstrators and you love stamping a product. That's why you're here. That's why you subscribe to my newsletter. So with that being said, why wouldn't you want to get all of your, the, the products that you love, why wouldn't you want to get them for a discount? So I went ahead and I made a list of 15 reasons why you may want to think about being a demonstrator. One, you'll be welcomed by our chalet stampers. We are a supportive group who love to collect Stampin' Up! products as much as we love to create. Two, you get to choose $155 a product for $99. Now this is the plus part of the starter kit. Normally we get to choose $125 a product for $99. They're sweetening the deal to $155. You get to customize your kit, which costs $99 and just the tax. You'll get free shipping, which is a $17.05 in savings, and that is according to like Michigan tax. You'll receive a free paper pumpkin kit, which is Stampin' Up's choice. Uh, you'll receive business supplies if you'd like to share it with your friends, but this is not required. Number six, you will receive a 20% discount on all of your goodies, which is what I've always loved about being a demonstrator. And number seven, you'll be able to be a part of the Stampin' Up! virtual and in-person events, which are pretty amazing, especially if you've just participated in World Card Making Day, which was on October the 1st. Uh, let's see here. Number eight, Stampin' Up! has a private Facebook group just for demonstrators full of inspiration just for you. And I really love that myself. Uh, number nine, our team has creative challenges every month with prizes. Woohoo! <laughs> and um, number 10, I love to share recognition with our team and the things accomplished um, that you accomplished. And I like to award you for those. Number 11, our team has gatherings weekly on Zoom as we are all over the USA. Uh, we share what's going on with Stampin' Up! and answer questions to support each other. We have Share and Stamp. And number 12, there is no requirement to sell products. There really isn't, you guys. So throw that, that misconception right out the window. Um, Enjoy your hobby and collection and be a savvy shopper. Number 13, when Stampin' Up! offers promotions, we get to participate in them as well and receive our discounts. Number 14, we get to pre-order products one month before customers can, yay! <laughs> and number 15, be a part of a great team of women who uplift and inspire each other. And that's truly what the chalet, chalet stampers are. Okay, so we've covered the starter kit. If you guys do have any questions on this, seriously, let me know. I hate, I mean, I hate, I love those of you who are my customers. First and foremost, you're my friends. So as a friend, I want to make sure that I'm sharing this with you. Because again, I would be a very terrible friend if I didn't share this. 
with you. And this is going on until the end of October. So it ends October 31st at 11 o'clock in the evening. And again, you get to customize your kit. So think about it. And like I said, if you have questions, let me know. And I think I covered everything. So like I said, today we're working with soft seedlings. I'm gonna scoop this up a little bit here. And I wanted to show you guys a couple of things. So this is our mini catalog, the July through December 2022 catalog. And this stamp set is on page 53. And I loved both of these cards. I changed this one up a little bit, uh, but we're going to make both of these. And then I have, like I said, a little bit of a technique for you. And on this card right here, do you guys see that? Let me hold it up because there's a little bit of a glare there. There we go. See that celebrate on there? I'm going to show you where that is and why you need the Santa's, hmm, I think it's called Santa's Delivery Memories and More Card Pack. Let me check. Let's flip on over here. I'll show you. I'll show you now. So, I had a bookmark there. This right here, this is a memories. Whoop, I hope I'm getting, there we go. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. Oh boy. So this set of memories and more cards has wood elements in it. And we're going to add that to our fall card. So again, even though this is Christmas, we're going to use the element to put on a fall card. So pretty fun stuff. We're gonna get a little messy today. You guys ready? So what you're going to need are some of the Regal colors in um, ink refills, or sometimes I call these re-inkers. And I have Real Red, uh, Cajun Craze, Pumpkin Pie, uh, Crush Curry, and whoops, I forgot to turn off the volume on my computer. Also, whoop, old olive that wants to run away and rich razzleberry because I thought to me there's a little bit of purple in leaves sometimes. So with that being said, I forgot a block so I need to get that here really quick and look at you guys. I actually put the stickers on the stamps. I know, I know, don't fall over or anything but yeah, <laughs> I did it. So what I'm going to do and by the way, I know, squirrel moment. How many of you keep the, um, what do I want to call it? The, um, 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 gosh, you know, every time I get on live, I have like brain farts, I swear. <laughs> but the outside image, I guess you want to call it, or the negative of the rubber. How many of you guys keep that in your case? I do so I can look on the back and see if there are any uh, stamps missing. I don't know just a helpful tidbit in case take it as you like let me grab some blocks because we will need a few actually one of those is very excessive I have like a whole container of blocks. It's crazy that I've accumulated over the years being a demonstrator. But sometimes they get kind of yucky. And after a while, I'm just like, I want a new shiny block. Okay, so the first project we are going to do today is going to be this one right here. And like I said, this is in the catalog. Whoops. I'm also going to get a piece of scrap paper. This looks pretty raunchy because I was using it to create what we're doing today. So it's been kind of like wet with water and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. But we're going to use that so I don't get it directly on my surface as far as any ink. And I got all my goodies in here. So let's just move these off to the side since I don't have a block for each because I was bad and I didn't prepare in advance. The thing about these, they are so super sticky, you guys, if you put the stickers on your stamps, that if you try to keep them on for a few days and then try to remove them, 
they stick really bad. Like I've ruined a stamp by the rubber coming apart from this cushion. And that is what helps you give a nice crisp image on your paper. And yeah, that was a big no-no. Anywho, let's see here. Um, I have all my little notes on my little package here. So first of all, we're going to use some old olive cardstock. And I've cut this at five and a half by eight and a half. And I scored it at four and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and give it a nice crisp fold with my bowing folder. And then um, I have a piece of very vanilla. I haven't used very vanilla too much. I started thinking about that. I'm like, dang, very vanilla, where have you been? And this is for the inside liner of our card. And this is cut at four by five and a quarter. I'm going to put that inside just like so. Ta-da! And then this is a piece of very vanilla as well and this is cut at four and a quarter by three and three quarters and i also have a piece of sahara sand this is for our sentiment and this is two and three quarters by one inch and then i also have this ribbon which oh my gosh what is the name of this i know it's sahara sand in color and it's in our annual catalog. And I cut off a piece that was just a little bit longer, so about four inches, whereas this is three and three quarters inches. And then I'm gonna trim it down just a little bit. But I thought I'd cut it a little bit longer than shorter, just in case. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take my scrap paper, grab my block, I'm hoping, whoops, let's grab this one. I was going to use this as a palette, but we'll make do. Okay, so with that being said, um, I used Sahara Sand, Old Olive, and Pumpkin Pie. Yum! <laughs> Doesn't that get you kind of hungry for fall, right? So I think the first color I'll do will work light to dark. So the first color I'm going to use is Sahara Sand. And let me see here. I also have my Simply Chamois because we're going to need this a lot. It's going to get a little messy in here. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and just direct to the stamp. We're going to ink that up. And... Let's see, we'll just stamp it right about here. Pretty. Ooh, that didn't stamp so well. That's why they make two sides. So we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna start again. There we go, that's better, ta-da! <laughs> and then we're going to Let's see, we'll use pumpkin pie next. And we're gonna go ahead and turn this. So this one's kind of floating hmm, this direction. Isn't that pretty? And then the last color will be old olive. So we're cleaning our stamp a lot. And we're gonna go ahead and, mm -hmm, we'll put that one there. Looks good, isn't that pretty? Okay, clean that off again. So it's ready for the next card. And then, actually I'm gonna leave this open. We're going to need the old olive for the sentiment. Get that out of the way for now. And where did I put, where did I put the sentiment? Oh, there it is. It's right in front of my face. <laughs> How many of you guys do that? I, I, especially this week, oh my gosh. It's been like a constant struggle. I have something in front of me and I can't find it. 
All right, this says thinking of you. And again, I'm using old olive. I'm going to go ahead and center it ish. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. There you go. I'm going to center it ish onto the Sahara sand piece. Woo, that turned out good. Yay. And then. I want to put a little bit of hmm, glue, my seal, stamp and seal. I'm gonna put it along the bottom of the Sahara sand. And then I'm gonna take my ribbon, straighten it out and lay this on top. See what I mean? It's a little bit long. So I'll take my scissors and just snip it a little bit. like that. And oh, I know what I forgot to do too. I also want to take the image that I didn't get out of my set, which is this little guy. And we're also going to stamp the background. Put that over here. Just randomly on the old olive. I love that. I think it's so cool. It's very, very realistic. Okay, there we are. Just a little bit. Give it a little bit more interest for the background. You're not going to see it a whole lot anyway, but um, it's what I like to do. And then we're going to go ahead and put this on kind of like so. And I'm going to use, yes, I'm purposely putting that on kind of kitty wampus, I call it, a little bit crooked. Again, it adds interest to the card front. Adding my favorite dimensionals to the back of it. Peel all these guys off so we can stick it direct to the card base. And that way no one will ever know I messed up on the other side, right? That's what I love about stamping. It can always hide all the imperfections. And then I'm going to go ahead and add dimensionals to our sentiment as well. We'll put three of them on there. Peel those buggers off and place it over towards the right-ish side of the card. And then one more thing, I'm using the Fine Sparkle Adhesive Backed Gems. And we're just going to put a couple of them on the card. Now these look familiar, right? They're in our mini catalog and they kind of go with that whole gnome, kindest gnome suite. And I'm gonna take just a couple of these maybe. I thought I'd try the spatula side. I think I'm used to the pokey tool on the other side. And if you guys um, have not had a chance to, oh my gosh, yeah, I think I might. I'm going to show you this as well because I'm just not. So this has two sides to it and then you just screw it into place. Pretty awesome, pretty easy. And we're going to go ahead there we go. Now it's pretty. It has sparkle. Everything in my world has to sparkle, right? So there you go. There's card number one. Pretty simple. Now we are going to grab up the next card here. This one I think is my favorite. Isn't that cool? I love it. Now, once again, this set does not have dies. So fussy cutting is now your new best friend, right? <laughs> but with that being said, I'm not going to have you watch me cut all these leaves. So it's okay. Take a deep breath. You're good. So with that being said, get out all my pieces here. And I've pre-cut all my leaves. Yay! <laughs> I know, relief. 
So um, with that being said here, like I got a lot of leaves. I'm also going to use the red and green adhesive back pearls because there are other colors, this gold and the silver. I like both of these. That will also go with fall stuff. So anyway, we'll be using those towards the end if I don't forget. And then this Celebrate right here. This is from that Santa's, Santa's something or another, the Memories and More cards that I was just showing you in the book. So I took Celebrate right out of there. These are really cool, you guys. I'm really digging them. You just need to be careful when you punch them out. Be gentle and have patience so that you don't break them because they will break easily, just to warn you. But I love these. And you can color them up with our Stampin' Blends if you don't want them the wood look. For me today, I'm not going to do that. I like the look of it for fall, having that wood uh, finish on them. So anyway, and there's another card towards the back of our catalog too that I believe uses Merry Christmas out of those wood um, elements. And people have been asking, where is that? And it's in the Memories of More card pack that you'll find in the Santa's Express suite of products. So grab those up, guys, because I think that they're pretty awesome. Okay, anyway, we used on this card... Um, crush curry and I cut the crush curry at five and a half by eight and a half and I scored it four and a quarter and then I have a piece of basic white that's four and a quarter four by five and a quarter excuse me it's four by five and a quarter I'm gonna go ahead and take my seal and we're gonna put this on the inside of the card it's just a liner for the card I think that putting a liner inside your card just kind of sets it off. It's just an extra little touch. And then, like I said, um, what we're going to do first, before we layer the leaves, I want to go ahead and stamp the background. So we're going to take this big, beautiful stamp once again. I'm going to get my ugly scrap paper, put these leaves off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and stamp a background with crushed curry. So it's kind of a tone on tone. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this bugger up. Sometimes with stamps that are this big, you may want to lay your stamp flat on the table and then take your ink pad and ink it this way, which is actually easier. You can see where the stamp um, excuse me, where the ink has reached on the stamp. So if there's anything that you have not covered, you know it. Did that make sense? You know where the ink needs to be yet. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I think it's such a cool stamp set. So someone said, too bad it doesn't have dyes. But like I said, I'm showing you that you know, you don't have to have dyes with every set, but you do need to then sometimes fussy cut or not. And the next card that we're going to do, we won't have to fussy cut. So yay to that, right? Okay, whoops, I got a stamp that's sticking to my stamp pad. Alrighty, so that takes care of the background. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy. The other day when I was creating with these, I ended up turning yellow like crushed curry, almost like the color of my top. Okay, so isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. So then the next thing I wanted to do, first of all, this is a strip that is, I think, one by, I should have the measurements here, but we'll just go ahead, we'll measure it. Or is it three quarters? It's three quarters by two and a half. Or two and a quarter, I'm sorry. Three quarters by two and a quarter. And then what I'm going to be doing is gluing this to the DSP. And this is the Rustic Harvest paper um, that I, I really am digging that I used 
last week for Facebook Live. So if you really love that stuff, go ahead and look up last week's video. I'm gonna go ahead right now and take some of my liquid glue and use it very sparingly. This stuff can come out and really um, mess up, <laughs> mess your project up. So I try to use this very, very sparingly. It does dry clear. And yes, I do call this green glue, even though it is not green, obviously. Just something I've always called it because it's in a green container. But it's our multi-purpose liquid glue and you can find this in our annual catalog or at my online store. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick that on there. What's nice too, using liquid glue, it gives you a couple of seconds of um, time to move something around if you need to. So we're gonna go ahead and set that off to the side. That's gonna be our element that we'll add last on the card. So in the meantime, I went ahead, and of course, you, you can see I haven't completely cut this one out yet, but um, again, I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with cutting out a bunch of leaves, so I did it ahead. So a couple of the leaves I left the stem on, and a couple of them I've cut that other part off. So it just depends on what you like. I don't want it to look too, too cluttered. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on direct with more liquid glue onto my card front. So we're gonna go ahead and just scribble, scribble, scribble. There we go. And put this on like so. And let's see here, this one I stamped in Cajun Craze. And we're gonna again apply glue on the back. And you know, it doesn't have to be cut out perfectly because a lot of this is gonna be covered anyway. And we're gonna go ahead and stick that guy on there like so. And then let's see, I need a pumpkin pie. If I have one here, well, please, we'll use this one. This one, Oh, yeah, that's right, because I didn't cut that out. I'm just talking to myself. Don't mind me. <laughs> so this is one of the leaves that I'm going to show you the technique on next. But we'll go ahead. We'll add that to this card. Because he's just purdy. <laughs> we'll add him over here. Isn't that cool? I love that. And then, hmm, we'll add... This is Rich Razzleberry, and I think I'm going to cut the leaf, or, well, you know what I mean, the leafy part, cut that one off, and we'll put him in the middle-ish, and I'm going to keep these because I can use them later on another project, and then this, we're going to add... I think I'm going to cut that off of there, too, and just use the leaf and like that. Okay, that looks good. Perfect. Ta-da! And then these little guys, I call them helicopters when I was little. <laughs> How many of you collected those things off the trees? There we are, we're gonna stick that one there and I think we'll stick on one more in Cajun Craze and we'll put him right about here. There we go, awesome. And then, <laughs> Dawn's got st sticky fingers now. I'm gonna go ahead and take that element that we glued together onto the DSP and I'm going to put that on with Dimensionals, of course, right? So I wanna make sure that this is gonna be sturdy, so I'm gonna be very generous with those dimensionals. Whoop, there we are. Peel these puppies off. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the card just like so. And then I've already tied a bow, see you guys? I'm trying to think ahead. And with that, I've lost my, huh. Okay, we'll put this on with glue. So apparently <laughs> I have lost my mini glue dots. That's okay. We will just make do. So that'll take a couple seconds for that to dry. This is when I get impatient using liquid glue. I have a love hate with this stuff. I mean, it has its place, but oh, sometimes I just get it all over. And then, like I was telling you, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these they're in the Chris, I forgot which part in our July through December book, but with the, um, one of the suites that's Christmas oriented, but I really like the gold on the fall stuff. I just think it looks classy and it's a nice little touch. All right, so that is card number two. Let me know what you guys think of that one. And then for the last one, we're just going to play a little bit. Let's see here. Put that with that. And I have a whole bunch of stuff here. So almost all of my colored cardstock, I've cut it five and a half by eight and a half and then scored it four and a quarter. Now I've, like I said, I'm using all these different ink refills and they're from the Regals collection. And the Regals are all those fun fall colors. And let's see, I think I'm going to use Crush Curry as one of my base colors for now. And we'll see what happens from there. Also, you're um, going to want to have some strips, once again, of, Sahara Sand, and that is cut at, I forgot to mark that down on my notes, righty, at one inch by three and three quarters. And then also, the other thing you're going to want, and this is something I haven't used in a while, this is our shimmery white cardstock. So it's a specialty cardstock. It's something that you can uh, get at my online store, obviously. It's located in our annual catalog. And so we're gonna play just a little bit. And I wanted to show you what we're going to do. So I have some card bases and I put, I believe the liner, yep, inside each of these. And I chose Crush Curry, Old Olive, yeah. Just those two. Okay, but here's what we're going to do. How pretty, right? Okay, so those are not a whole lot of playing, but then we get into something like this and like that and like that. So, yeah. Oh, I had so much fun. I could have made these for hours. So I wanted to just show you what you can do with your ink refills. I always say when you buy a stamp pad, always buy the ink refill that way. And I know, yes, this is not the same color. But anyway, that way you know that you have the insurance of having that ink refill when you need it if your ink pad gets a little dry and also for playing like what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to take, what size block is this guy? I know he's a biggie. Uh, it is a, it's an eye, eye block. And then also I brought out my water painters. These are fun to work with and I think I've done another project previously on a Facebook Live way back, it seems like. But you just fill them with tap water. They, <laughs> they unscrew the opposite direction of what you would think. I don't know why, but that's, 
that's just how they work. Anyway, so you fill the reservoir with just tap water. It's full right now and right in rock and roll. Whoopsie, there I go again, trying to close it and it screws the opposite direction. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take these one, two, three, four, five, six colors of ink refills. And we're gonna go with Real Red, Crush Curry, like I said, we're just gonna play a little bit. What's nice about using a block as a palette is that it's going to clean off quickly. It's not going to stain, which is really nice. And usually what I'll do is I'll just take, I have Windex and some paper towels set aside here that I'll use to uh, clean it off. There's some crushed curry and here's old olive. In fact, we might just a little bit more. And I even thought, because in my world, I have seen leaves that turn a little purple. Haven't you guys? There we go. All right. So if this does not get you in the mood for the prime color season, um, I call those people that go look at the, the leaves uh, tree peepers. <laughs> Oh, uh, when we had the inn, that's what we had in the, uh, this time of the year were tree peepers. <laughs> People that go on tour around the lake to look at the colors of the trees. Makes sense to me anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get my scrap out just in case it gets kind of messy because it might. But what we're going to do is take um, our shimmery white cardstock. I've cut these at three by four inches. Now, again, you're gonna to wanna to cut quite a few of these because this is highly addictive. The reason why I'm using the shimmery white cardstock instead of our basic white or the very vanilla thick cardstock, um, I think that this takes the water with it a little bit better, but you don't wanna over water either. And you'll see what I mean as we play. But you could use our watercolor paper. Um, it'll give a different effect because it's a little more textured, but you'd have to work with more water too. Whereas this, you don't have to work with as much water and you'll get the feel for it as you play as well. So we're gonna go ahead, take a piece of this three by four shimmery white cardstock. We're going to use crushed curry as our base. We're going to use this beautiful leaf image from Soft Seedlings. And we're gonna go ahead and ink this up really good and I have my I'm gonna move these aside because these are gonna get in my way I'm afraid of everything just getting full of ink here <laughs> so I also have my simply chamois right here as well so it I can help to use it as a cleaning palette I guess if you want to call it that with my water painter I'm used to calling these aqua painters because I think that's what they called them way back when. Old habit, die hard. Okay, so once again, we have crushed curry on this already. And let's go ahead, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and put a little water. So you just squeeze it just a little bit. Water comes out fast. So, And then you're just going to go ahead and we're going to play. And we're going to paint onto our stamp. How cool is that, right? Isn't that pretty? And then let's see here, this is a little bit of yellow, so we're gonna add that to it so it's not too, too orange. And then oh, we're gonna add a little bit of red. This is so much fun. It's actually quite relaxing. I hope you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here. All right, there we go. Because as you know, when you're walking and out at the park and you look at the leaves as they change, they're not perfect by any means, right? So you have just that little bit of water on there, right? I'm gonna go ahead, turn it around and hold our breath. <laughs> and here we go. 
Isn't that cool? What I really love about this, check this out. So some of it looks like watercolor, but you can also see the veins in the image of that stamp. Very, very cool. Like it a lot. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you clean this off each time, especially if you're using something like crushed curry as your base color, because that could get kind of ooky, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We have a clean stamp once again. And this time, I'll tell you what, let's use, let's use Old Olive as our base. Like I said, you can see how this can get really addicting, right? And once again, we're going to ink it up, Old Olive, and then take our water painter. And let's see, let's add some more green to it actually. Uh, around the edge. And then uh, let's add a little bit of pumpkin pie and real red. Let's see how this turns out. Who knows? It might be really gross. We'll see. You just never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. Okay, and here we go. And, whoops. Ooh, I kind of dig that. Isn't that cool? It only takes a couple minutes for them to dry. So that's why I figured we play first, and then we can add them to our card bases. And let's see, let's see, let's see, let's do orange for a base and grab another piece. I think I cut four or five pieces of the shimmery white cardstock. So I forgot to warn you guys that if you were looking for a quick Facebook Live, this one definitely is not it. <laughs> but we're playing and we're having fun, right? So let's go ahead and add a little more water here. And tappy, 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 tappy. Just pretend that you're an artist because you are, you are an artist, right? And we're gonna put a little bit down here, maybe a little bit on this leafy thing and add that. Okay, I kind of forgot what colors all we had on there. And once again, see it's just wet enough, right? I'm gonna go ahead and stamp, stamp, stamp. Leave it on there for a second. Let that absorb the color, lift off, and there you go. So pretty. And then we'll do just one more because you guys get the drift now, right? So what I would love to see you guys do with this technique, play, just play. And if you feel like it, share it in Dawn's Creative Chalet um, community, paper crafting community on Facebook. I think I said that twice, but you know, you get it. I would love to see what you guys come up with. And what's really cool, I mean, as far as this is a technique with leaves, but you could do this with other images as well. It would be beautiful. Okay, so we used Cajun Craze. So I'm gonna go ahead, add a little bit of yellow. I'll make a little yellow down here. And how about, uh, let's see here. I think this is, Crush curry, yep. And let's see, we didn't use any of this rich razzleberry. So we'll use it on the tips here. I think that'd be kind of pretty, right? Add that. Okay. All righty, and drum roll. Let's see what we get. Even this is kind of pretty, isn't it? <laughs> okay. 
<gasps> Ooh, I like that one too. That's really cool. And then if you didn't want to do any of the water coloring, clean that off enough. And I have one more piece. We're not going to do any water coloring. We're just going to use the ink color of Old Olive. Whoops. Ooh, I almost got that all over the front of me. That would have been pretty. Not. And there we are. So you can see the difference between get this out of the way between the two so this is with the water and this is without both very pretty but different effects i love it i think it's so much fun and before i end up with a huge mess i am going to just take care of most of that so i don't get my elbow in it <laughs> Because that, that would be bad. All right. So, move that out of the way. And then, like I said, I cut out a couple of pieces. See, that was almost dry. Now, if you wanted to, you could take your heat tool, give it a quick shot of heat to make sure that it dries for you. If you get a little impatient like I do. And then we also have the Crush Curry card bases. Whoops. <laughs> Make sure that they're opening the correct way before you put them together. Ask me how I know. Oh, and this one. Oh, I cut those different, I guess. Got it. Okay. I cut two that open one way and then two that open the other. This one. Ooh, I don't know. This is a tough, tough choice, but I think I'm going to use this one. Isn't that cool? So we're going to go ahead and assemble these really quick. Um, running out of dimensionals, but I do have more. Saved by the bell. So I'm going to go ahead and put these together really fast. So you could really go to town and do quite a pile of these, um, like a production line, seriously. And here we go. All right. Oops, you can't even see over there, can you? All right, there we go. And then this one. So I hope that you guys have had a really good weekend. Okay, we're gonna use we're gonna use the crust. There we go. I know I'm a little excessive, but that's that's me. That's Dawn. Very excessive. And there we go. And then the other thing that we need to do yet is to put the sentiments on these guys as well. Make sure that's dry. But how fun is this, right? People are gonna look at that and go, wow, how did you do that? That is so cool. There we are. And this one here. All right. Ooh, isn't that pretty with the crushed curry? Really like that. And then fresh dimensionals. Love it. <laughs> the little things that excite me, you know? All right. And... Stick this one on like so. And then as far as sentiments go, let's see, four and, oh my goodness, excuse me. I think we're going to use thinking of you again because this, 
This can be used for a lot of different things, right? And I'm going to use, I think the green, the old olive on all four of these. I love the font in this. It's so pretty. It just kind of jives with the stamp set perfectly. And with that, what we'll do is put this on with seal. Let's see, we'll put it right about there. All right. I have those liners inside the card kind of floating. That's what you're probably seeing going, what is that that's peeking out from the card? Ooh, that's really pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Nice. And this one too. I really, really like that a lot. There we are. So I'm ready to rock and roll with fall, right? And then we have all of our others here as well. There we go. Fun stuff. Alrighty, and one more thing I wanted to show you because I really went to town cutting out leaves and this is one of our boxes. Um, it has a window in it, although I've covered most of it. But once again, I took a couple of the leaves that I did with the watercolor technique, a couple without, and I just stuck them directly to the box. And this is a cute little box that you could put all of your cards into. And wouldn't that make a really cute gift? Now, if you wanted to also put envelopes in there, then I would include less cards and do a couple of gifts. Or if you wanted to wrap a ribbon around it or a belly band, something like that, you can totally decorate these any way that you like. But um, I was having an obsession with the leaves <laughs> the last couple days. So anywho, I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, the technique of the watercoloring with this set. I think it's gorgeous. And if you have it, play with it a bit and see some different color combinations that you think might go together because you'll be pleasantly surprised, I'm sure. Bring out the artist in you. Well, thanks again, you guys, for participating in my mini class today. If there are any items that you've seen that you don't have that you like to grab up, this is my online store. And I appreciate when you do shop with me. And I always send a handmade card to thank you. So this is the host code for October. I'm going to bring it up close and personal for you. There you go. And if you have any questions or if you would rather that I place your order for you, just um, zip me a message and I'll make sure to take care of things with you. In the meantime, I hope that you guys have a really good week. Thanks for spending some time with me. Sorry that this was a little bit lengthy, but I don't know. I just was having so much fun. I had to share it with all of you as well. You guys have a great day. Happy fall. And I will be gone again next week, but I'll be pre-recording for next week as well. I have just a really crazy October and my dad is needing me to help him down in Florida going through an attic of stuff. Yay. <laughs> so that's going to be exciting. But anyway, so you're going to see some pre-recorded stuff for most of October, but I promise I'll be checking in. So, and making sure that this thing posts okay and comment on the post. So please say hi and let me know where you guys are viewing from. All right, make it a great week, everybody. Have fun, get inky, and I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye.